as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh-huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. What's going on, guys? It's Trip Young here, real fans, real talk. Usually we have our family meet us at the TV station, but you know COVID is still out here kicking everybody's ass. Uh, <laughs> so we still on our virtual episodes. But uh, once things do open back up in the station, we're gonna bring bring uh, bring these these two uh, two two boxing uh, aficionados into the station with us. Um, but let me introduce everybody first. My co-host Eric Sanchez, Legend in Two Games. What's going on, man? What's really good, bro? I'm excited for this episode. As well, and I know we got a lot to get into, so I don't waste too much time. And, and and we got we got the champ. The champ is back. You know, I love it when the champ pull up, man. What champ? Where the belt at? You ain't ran the belt for the interview. Come on, you know the fans need to see that. I got you know, I, <laughs> I got some of them in my in my in my trunk, and they're scattered around here somewhere. We gonna we gonna save it when you yeah. get when you get to the station, and we are gonna save it for the station. But uh, yeah, just just the bigs, man. What's going on, my brother? How's everything? Everything is good, man. Everything is good. We just uh, buckling down, uh, getting ready for my sister's fight. That's really it. And, and we got you know. the we got the future champ in the building, uh, Aida uh, Biggs. Hi, Aida. This this your first time on the show, and I got to tell you this because we, you know, on on real fans, real talk, we speak things into existence. And uh, I think it was two two episodes back when we had Justin on. We say he was going to be the champ. And he was the champ, so we about to speak that into existence. That's how we started North. We speaking that future championship into existence for you too. <laughs> Appreciate that, guys. Welcome, welcome. How do you feel? <clears throat> you got your pro debut coming up later this week. How are you feeling going into this fight? I'm um, feeling ready. Um, I have a few more days of training, um, and the only thing is, I'm just gonna have to get used to the traveling. To you know, um, for the pro debut, usually when I, when I fight is at home. So I don't have to take a plane or anything. So I'm just uh, working that out schedule wise, with getting my hair done and all that stuff, and making sure I have everything I need for another state. But I'm feeling good though. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, and, and Justin, you're doing the promotions uh, for this fight as well, correct? Yeah, well, actually, for this one, uh, the only I have my sister. Uh, she. This is not my event. Uh, I have my sister. She's you know one of my fighters, and I have another fighter that I'm scouting. That we're sending him out there to fight, um, but on March six, it's going to be my promotion uh, completely, and you know I'm throwing that. Okay, congratulations to you on that as well, because I was, I know you've been you've been spreading things around, uh, you know, fighting and promoting now. So I'm, uh, congrats on on another uh, venture uh, for yourself. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, man. They they you know fighters like my sister make they make it easy, you know. That's a, that's that's a fact. That's a fact. How nerve wracking do you think it's going to be to watch your sister in a fight? Uh, it's it's always pretty nerve wracking. Um, just making sure she's, you know, making you know, because there's certain things you may have done differently while while you're in there in the ring. But uh, I'm very, you know, I'm very confident in her. I know she's preparing well. Um, and because you know, I think with these situations, I have like a lot more control. Like I kind of can scout the opponent. And I know what's going on, and I kind of know how she's training. I feel a lot more comfortable. That's a fact. Um, all right. So I, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy because because you, you you told us about her when you came on the show, and uh, we were kind of so we were kind mm-hmm. we've been waiting for this uh this this debut to uh, go down, but we are we are here is gonna go down at the end of of the month, and you said you're still you're still training right now. So just talk to us a little bit about how vigorous the training is right now because we got about I think a week and a half a week left before the fight. Yeah, yeah this yeah, is our last week of camp. This for me or for Justin? Go, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go, go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, we have about a week left to camp. Um, this is when everything sort of slows down a little bit. So right now, I'm just I have like uh two more spawn days left, but everything else is pretty much just uh like uh, strength and conditioning, more conditioning, less strength, because you know you kind of want your body to recover before the fight comes. So, uh, pretty much all the hard work has been put in already. How long was this camp? Uh, it was sort of a continuation of my first camp. I was supposed to fight on um, December 12th, and it didn't go through. So I had been training, like, 
a little like two and a half months before that fight didn't go through. So then I took some time off, like around Christmas time, and I just got right back into training um, uh, at the start of the new year. So it's been a long camp. <laughs> and you guys, uh, Justin, because because <clears throat> it's, it's it's the trio actually, because it's you, your, your your brother as well, and, and yeah, yeah. So so you guys all all, all boxing. Um, when are we gonna see the three of you guys fight on the same card? Um. Well, you know what. I'm trying to do me and I, me and my sister should be on the March 6th card together. She'll definitely be fighting. Uh, me, I had a shoulder surgery, so I've been recovering from that. So it's looking like I'll be cleared to fight on the six. Yeah. Uh, my brother, he also had a, I got a shoulder surgery too. So he's out for the next few months and he's been actually like modeling and stuff. So he had a, he signed a modeling contract. So he's doing some stuff for, for Nike and some other things. So, Okay. He's been uh pretty busy with that, but we all we all will be back together this year. Hopefully, maybe by the, maybe uh, towards the end of the year we can get we can get the the, the bigs 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 card. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely, definitely. The end of the year, definitely. And and this question is for both of you guys: How active do you plan on being in twenty twenty one? Like, how many fights are you guys trying to um, get booked and, and signed for this year? Um, um as a okay, go ahead, Edie. Well, I know I'm scheduled to fight twice already before, you know, um, before March. I'm fighting at the end of this month and then again March 6th. So that's two fights for me in the book. So probably if we keep going that way, maybe like four or five fights. Okay. What do you think? Six fights, five, six fights this year. Um, I plan on throwing a card every six weeks about. Um, so for myself, as many as possible, as soon as I'm back, like I, I wouldn't mind fighting like once a month for myself. Nice. That's, 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 that's going to get me back to the old school when, when boxers was fighting like every week, it sounds like, cause now fighters, mm-hmm. if you get one a year out of, out of a fighter, <laughs> you lucky. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm loving that. And, um, but you know what? I could, I could understand that when you say that, Justin, because your fights don't last that long, so I guess there's not too yeah. much, you know, strain on your body from the actual, you know, being in the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not for me. I've had. I've been blessed to have a really great professional career where I've been able to evaluate the opponents correctly, not take too much punishment, in the fight, and just get these wins. So the way the way I've been going. You know, I just plan on fighting as much as I, I can, you know, because I'm, I'm usually not doing anything better that day, so. Hey, you know, might as well. I got to shout out your, your mom as well because, uh, and, and this is why the reason I say this is because when we came down, myself and Eric, we was coming from, from the Bronx. We tried to make it to the fight. By the time we got to the fight, you had already knocked the kid out, so we couldn't even get in. And your mom was like, listen, I'm not even going to take no money from y'all here. She gave us the money back. We was like, no, nah, it's okay. She was like, no, y'all go ahead. So I got to shout your mom out. Yeah, I, I love how y'all family and everybody works together, you know? Thank you, man. I love that you guys uh, came out to, to, to show love, man. You know, um, you know we're only going to get bigger, bigger events, uh, bigger fights. And, you know, we're doing a lot of things independent now, so... It's really a beautiful thing. You guys are always welcome to come in and check the fights out uh, if it's in person or if it's on uh, BP Network because, you know, we started the network and we're streaming the fights from there. So we just got to leave a little earlier watch. next time because I can't I ain't trying to take the chance. We drive all the way out and then the fight be over before we even walk through the doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's just I know you guys are busy. You know, you guys have an amazing show. So either way, you guys come in person or you guys stream it. You know you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it. You're gonna enjoy the fights. Well, I want to get into the network, but before we do, because I want I want to follow up on something with Ida. You you had mentioned this is obviously the the first road trip for a fight. So yeah. going into this fight, are you trying to come out impressive out the gate, or are you trying to get some rounds in and then put on a strong showing towards the second half of that fight? Like, what, what's your mindset going into that? Um, my mindset is just just winning the fight, you know, and impressively. Like, I want to make sure whether it's a knockout or it's a you know, it goes the distance. I just wanted to definitely be a statement like, oh, she can fight. You know, it's not just like she's just some girl trying to do something, <laughs> trying to do something like, you know, in a male dominated sport. So I just want to make sure I look impressive, whether it's a knockout or uh, it goes to decision. And I just want it to be a definite, oh, she won, you know. Talk to us about your opponent. And, and Justin, you talked about the network. I'm sorry. Second. The, the opponent, the girl, yeah, the girl that you're that you're that you're gonna be fighting. 
Oh, um, she is, uh, she's a white lady. I know that much. And uh, she has much more professional experience. That, um, well, because I have none so far. So she has more professional experience than me. Um, one of my stable mates actually fought her. Um, and she won back in November with the knockout. So it shouldn't be that the competition level is not, you know, anything ridiculous. It's something that I obviously feel like I can handle from my first fight out. Um, and the competition after that would just get more, get more tough, you know, as we keep going. Okay. Justin, I wanted to ask you about the network. How did that come about? And, and what are some of the things that we can expect from the network? Cause I know you talked about streaming the fights uh, that are going to be coming up soon. Well, um, I had, had a deal with my brother. I said, uh, a dollar. I said, yo, um, I want to start. Sometimes I may not get a television date or, you know, things may happen differently. I want to be able to see my fights. So let's get a crew and let's record and let's put it on YouTube or Facebook or however we stream. And he came back with me with a whole network idea and was like, yo, we can stream, we can do this and on a higher level and then we can Basically, like, it's available on all platforms, uh, Amazon, Roku TV, uh, the gaming devices. It'll be on there soon, uh, at the iPhones and, and everything. So it was just an amazing uh, idea that he had. And then on top of that, we ended up uh, being able to put different genres of things on it. Like, you know, if it's a sports show or a, a comedy, we're just, like, really... I'm really uh, bringing a lot more to the actual app now to keep people entertained and it's to make it even more than just a, a sport, a, a sport, a sports app, you know? Is this, is this fight going to be uh, streamed as well? Like, will we, will we be able to watch it from, from, this, from home? Yeah, this one, this one will be streamed, but it won't be streamed on, on my, on, on our platform. It'll okay. be on the, another platform fight TV, but on March 6th, it'll be streamed to completely on, on my platform. Okay, cool, cool. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put the uh the the info for the people that want to stream the fight, um up in the mm. uh in the credits when when the episode drops on Thursday, so we'll they'll be able to go and watch the fight because we want everybody to to if you can't get there in person, we want them to show up and support, let you know the family is is rocking with you and we pulling for you. I, I listen, absolutely, man. I mean, you know, sis, she yeah, you know, she she has a lot you know on her plate right now because you know she's been deemed by a lot of female veteran champions that she was like the next up and some people say like she's the best they've ever seen like you know do it so you know I, I expect her to be one day on that Mount Rushmore you know of female boxing so you know she has a lot of work to, to do there's one female champion um who's very active right now in particular that I that I that I that I do like um Clarissa Clarissa mm -hmm. Shields. Shields, yes. Is now I know we 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 early we early in the in the career, but you know again I like to speak mm -hmm. things into existence. You know what I'm saying? Is that is that something that you look forward to getting to the ring with somebody like that down the road? Yeah, definitely Clarissa, because yeah. that's where you get the you get the most money with the big fights. So I, I like that she's. Uh, gonna be bigger than me so we probably have to do like a catch weight because i'm i'm expecting to campaign around 130 135 but i mean i'm sure we could set something up do something with that i would love to fight it'll be a great honor since we're talking about clarissa and i want to i had to get your, your opinions on this because we've asked justin this before mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on the sport of box right now we're seeing a lot of these crossover fights clarissa shields is actually doing one with mma do you feel it's good for the sport of boxing or do you feel like kind of tarnishes the actual uh skill and art form of the sport uh i think it's good for boxing only because uh you get to see i mean i think mma is a tough sport as well but you get to see uh sort of which one dominates because it's always been a, a competition between mma and boxing which one is better and remember a couple years ago boxing is going to be extinct and you know MMA. so like when we, when we had the floyd mayweather versus conor mcgregor fight and we saw the difference in skill it was it just it was just good for the sport of boxing like you know the conversation kind of was dead after that so when i see clarissa going uh, you know going over to mma i am not worried for her at all because as long as she doesn't get you know into any like serious grappling or anything like that which i'm sure she'll perfect that side of her skill but 
I think her hands will carry her along in the fight. Well, she that she gonna have to get a knockout, uh, try to get that one quick. Because I will say yeah. this, I do feel like you know, with if they were stepping into the boxing ring, obviously you know you guys have the advantage. But going into MMA and, and into their world, they have the advantage because again, you got grappling, you got the ground game, you got kicks um, as well. So I, I I hope that she's that she's preparing herself well uh, for for that because it is different than being in the boxing ring. In the boxing ring, it's, it's not even close. I always say, you know, if yeah. MMA fighters could really compete with boxers, they'd be boxing because that's where the, the bigger money is right now. Right. Uh, unless, unless you're like Conor McGregor or, 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 or John Jones, they, they they get nice checks for their fights. But average MMA fighter is not making what the average boxer is is making. Right, right. You know, is that something the common denominator think? is the the hands, like you know, the common not denominator between both sports is the hand skills. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, even when I saw when um, Holly Holm beat Ronda Rousey, I knew it would happen because she was a former, um, I think she was like a four-time world champion, yep. female boxing world champion. So it was already, I already knew what was going to happen with that. She was in her, you know, her arena. And Ronda Rousey usually has problems with fighters that have hand skills like that, that have like that boxing mm-hmm. background. So yeah. uh, you know, if, if Carissa can catch her catch her first with a couple of hits, you know, maybe we could we, she can avoid uh, any kicks or anything like that or getting thrown to the ground and maybe she can take the W. Right. I'm 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 for it though. I definitely want to see it. Now would would you do something like that? Would you would you do the, the, the... I I I'll never say never, but it's not as appealing to me as boxing is. I don't really like the, you know, <laughs> The thought of somebody kicking me or anything like that, like no no socks on. I don't know. It's just I'm not really into the idea of it. But I'll, I'll never say never. If if, if if you know later down the line, I feel like it's something I should do with my team thing. So then we'll do that. We gotta get we gotta get yeah, to, get a couple strong. of belts first, and then we could work on that transition over to over to MMA right. after you get your boxing you know accolades in. Yeah. Then yeah, the right. sport is so you know MMA. I believe is just like it's so it's so young. That you can sneak in being dominant at one thing and kind of shine, in the sense of the 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 boxers like a lot of us we've been doing this since we was like eight years old. So mm-hmm. the muscle memory we move is just very hard to jump into boxing as a man as, as an adult and kind of you know make it happen or make some money doing it. But in that sport, soon it'll be too hard for a fighter to come and say, "I'm gonna be an MMA fighter." Uh, in the future because people have been doing it since they were kids and it's just a different type of thing. But now I feel like a Christian Shields can do it. I feel like someone that's a boxing champion can do it. I feel like someone with a wrestling uh, uh, Olympian can do it. Can you, um, would you be able to, and this is a serious question I need to know, is there anything that you Mm -hmm. can do to help Conor McGregor with his hand skills? Because last night he got knocked Uh out again and it just, the boxing is just not there. And I feel like he needs some extra help from a, so maybe a boxing champion could help him out. I think that Connor, I believe this is mostly he's not in the, the proper shape. And I think also it's the confidence. I think Connor, his confidence is kind of shot because everything told, told him that he was, and it started with Floyd Mayweather. Everything told him he was better than Floyd. He was bigger than him. He was stronger than him. And then like this, this smaller guy that's supposed to be getting knocked out by one shot walks through all your punches, takes your best shots, and plays with you. And you realize that you were just being played with. And then, you know, Khabib comes and he sees what Con- what Floyd did to you. So he comes and runs to you. And it just becomes like, it's a confidence thing. That guy's a very, you know, when I heard him speaking, and he wasn't really, ne- he wasn't himself. He wasn't super negative. He wasn't, you know, outrageous. He was so... Very he was humble. a shell of himself, you know? So I, I knew it wasn't going to be good for him. Yeah. No, that's a great point. He, he said so himself after the fight yesterday that the inactivity is just is hurting him right now. He hasn't been in the ring enough times over the last year and a half to really withstand that type of um, punishment that he took yesterday. You know, two shots and he was already stumbling around. Um, we, we talked about the Connors and, you know, the guys coming over. What are your thoughts on some of these celebrities? You know, we're seeing celebrities get in the ring now. They train for a year or two and they think they're legitimate boxers. And as uh-huh. you talked about, this is a sport you've, you've trained for and, and your whole life and pretty much every professional fighter trains their whole life. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on these guys that just jump in the ring for a quick payday? I think it's good. I think it's cool. I mean, I, I've seen a difference of being a boxer now and being a boxer kind of like maybe five years ago, three years ago. Uh, 
boxers is like are like rappers and rock stars now, you know, like, and it's because everyone feels as if yeah, I could throw some gloves on, I can get in there. And it's such a talked about sport between Mike Tyson and, and Jake Paul. Now, the only thing is I wish that when these guys like get up there, they will give a, a, a fighter that's dedicated their life opportunity to go ahead and, and uh, fight them one day. And I believe that the issue with MMA is this is, this is, going to happen eventually they're making the interim belts now they're going to start making a lot more opportunities to have a lot more stars and they have to keep these guys away from each other for a longer period of time because every time in mma when when they have a, a star that's uh mainstream they but by the time we start liking them they get knocked out yeah or, or they're no good like ronda rousey quick in and out john jones I, we don't know where he is, you know. Well, he, he um, had a different situation that was keeping him out. He, you know, he was, right? But 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 yeah. why? His but you know why he's was, he was most likely doing that because he was dealing with so many injuries because mm. the sport was so rough and he's fighting best opponent after best opponent. Then you look at they got Stylebender now, right? He's still the only one that kind of is like okay, he's a dominant athlete, but the the, the turnover rate is so high. Opposed to boxing, you have. You're waiting to see Tank fight Tiafimo. You're waiting to see him fight Devin. You're waiting to see Spence fight Crawford. They keep these guys. You get to see 30 fights of work before you get to see them fight that fight that's, that may ruin them. No, Aida, what's is how how is it is it different in as far as in the women's division? Like, do you do you feel like you're gonna have a hard time getting fights that you want? <clears throat> um. No, I don't think I will. I mean, I think that's been an issue for a lot of women in the past, but I don't know. You know how you just feel like you're, that you're different? <laughs> I just think that, you know, my career is going to go be kind of, you know, smooth sailing with that. I have a really good team, my brother, you know, and my, my family support behind me. I think that uh, the fights that I want to have, I think it'll be, I think it'll definitely happen. Um, and hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I'll have that big of an issue I, I i you know god willing i don't mm -hmm. how, do, how do you think it's going to affect and this is circling back to something you guys mentioned earlier about branching off you know your, your other brother is doing some modeling you guys are trying now to elevate yourself to that crossover level ida how do you feel from a woman's perspective that it may affect you being in such a brutal sport i think that it can only affect me positively because uh before people even see me fight, it's already like a bravery here because of because the sport is so brutal and I'm a woman. So people are automatically already have like respect for what I'm doing, you know, more so than the guys even. Like they're like, oh, boys are supposed to do that. And they look at me like, you're not supposed to be doing this. So I think that it can only just, you know, it, it can only affect me in a positive way. And then, you know, with the other stuff that we do, like Chris with the modeling and whatever else I decide to do, I think it'll just be a great marketing tool for us and even us as just a trio. Yeah, Edie, uh, I just thought I could say something. Aida has something very uh, different from a lot of other females. She can really fight, you know, on, on the highest levels and she's going to get better and better as she goes along. She can really, she can really beat the top girls. She has amazing, she has amazing punching power like, like a man. She's physically strong and she's, good looking for like not for a boxer but she's good looking just as a, a woman so all these things added added uh in the pot are going to bring her to the superstardom level so you and i expect her to be world champion by that uh by the end of the year early next year kind of like the uh i guess i, I would equate it to leila ali because she's she's a, exactly she's, she's she has those type of things and she's also uh, mm -hmm. you know beautiful as well so you know, it's just it. Thank you. And you know, and and you know, she has that that lineage too of obviously you know Muhammad Ali. But I think yeah, when you have that combination, mm -hmm. I think a lot of different doors uh, open up. So yeah, I can I can uh, I can I can see that as well. And like I said, we 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 looking at a future champ anyway. So it's definitely once once the, once the belts <laughs> come in, that's it. It's over. Oh yeah, it's over. I mean, I expect that. It to be after this fight on Saturday. I expect it to be pan pandemonium all through Brooklyn and and like her name to start circulating to where she's, you know, she's bigger than me. She's gonna grow 
10 times faster than I grew, you know, so and, and she, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be an amazing ride. You're training with, uh, with, with, with Yoel, um, as well. Yeah, I'm training with Dale Judah and Benny Roman. Okay, those are my two uh, coaches at this time. And because and so you got how, how's that? How's that work with time in the gym? Because y'all both need y'all need y'all need y'all time uh, with your well. So how's that work? Who gets who gets the first slot? Like how y'all how y'all figure that whole thing out? It's ladies first always. <laughs> 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 nah, uh, it was like pads or something like that. Since me and Justin get there at like the same time. He's watching the shadow box at the same time. Then we probably transition to the bag at the same time. Um, and I probably jump maybe three or four rounds of rope initially. So Justin can, you know, we're, we're, by the time we get on the bag and stuff like that, he'll probably call one of us for pads. It just depends on what, you know, the day. But usually he needs more time for Justin. So he gets me out of the way first. Have you gone through the gauntlet yet? Um, and the gauntlet is the last time we came to the gym, uh, they – and they was they just called everybody in the gym to get in the ring with uh with, with Justin and uh and go go around mm-hmm. the two. Have you been through that type of gauntlet yet? Not yet, no. <laughs> it's a lot of guys. It's a lot of men in the gym. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you know me versus a heavyweight is ideal. <laughs> Justin could do all of that stuff. <laughs> he, he got a little more. He got a little bit more experience. Yeah, fighting those guys. Do are are there uh, um other women that are training out of out of your gym? Or is it just you? Yeah, we have a uh, no. We have uh, some other women. We have a uh, priceless. Um, she's she's a good great fighter. Um, she's hasn't had any amateur fights yet, but she's also good work. You know, when she's in the gym, when I see her, she's uh, a little heavier than me though, so she's not really my weight class or anything. But when I do get a chance to work with her, um, we have another Gratia. She I haven't seen her in a while, but she, when she comes in the gym, I like working with her too. She's also um, heavier than me, but. We work well though. So you only yeah, you, you only spar with the with the girls, or you have have you sparred with the with the men as well? No, I spar with the men a lot actually. More than because than uh, you know, girls. the girls aren't there all the time. Okay. So oh, I mean, and I like, also have good. a Jewel, uh, Jewel Lambert. She's a I think she's about to be fighting for the um, Trinidadian Olympic team. So she's she's very good work. I, I actually work with her a lot uh, before this fight. And right before like Thanksgiving time, me and her worked uh, very well together. So she's great work. So when they're here, when they're in the gym, we work. Was that you know, something that you thought there, about doing? The the Olympic team? Did you did you think about doing that? I thought about it, but um, I'm kind of glad I'm going the way that I'm going because of the way the world is right now. Yeah. The Olympics. Still but would you say, Justin? I said she can still do it uh, as long as she's under. We plan on having her do that as well because as long as you're under 10 fights as a professional she still can go to the olympics okay so we still plan on trying to do that nice nice you said that's something that's still in the works that you may do yeah she can still do it uh, the rules are if you have under 10 amateur professional fights you can still go to the olympics so you know if it works out in time then we could still look at that nice nice well is, there's, there's a lot of a lot of options a lot of opportunities that are there um, really quick, because I I, I want to ask you, I want to get back to go back to the women's division uh, and Clarissa Shields for one second. Um, it, there's a lot of back and forth between her and Layla Ali right now. If that fight goes down, who do you think would win? Um, I think that it would be a great fight to watch. Um, Layla Ali obviously has plenty of experience, you know, from what she used to do. And she was very aggressive and she can really punch too. You know, like she was getting those girls out of there uh, back in her time. I think that Clarissa is younger and she's more active. So, I mean, it would only make sense for her to win, but you know, you can't count it out. She's a veteran, you know, she's been doing this for a long time and over the years she's been staying in pretty good shape, you know, as just as a woman. So, and I've seen a little videos of her training at her house and stuff. I don't think we can, you know, take out the out of the game soon, but it'll be a great fight to watch though, and it'll be a classic, definitely. Is this someone you model yourself after? Uh Justin. Well, listen, that's a good choice. That's a good that's a good choice right there. <laughs> Definitely, definitely a good choice. Not, not, not mad at that one. Got to keep it, keep it in the family. Um, but yeah. <laughs> listen, guys, we, 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 we don't, we don't, we don't actually, we don't broke over the time barrier. Um, 
But um, once again, just really quick, Aida, because Justin, you know the world, they, they know you already. Aida, get, give, them, give them all your social media, let them know where they can find you at, and um, just let them know one more time where they can watch the fight. Okay, um, my name is Aida Biggs. I'll be fighting this Saturday, January 30th in my first professional fight. Um, my Instagram handle is Aida, A-I-D-A, period, with W-I-T-H, period, love, L-O-V-E. I do not have Twitter. And yeah, I don't have Twitter. And I also have Facebook, but it's just my name, Aida Biggs. So you can find me on there. <laughs> All right, bet, bet, bet. Right. And you guys know you got y'all know y'all know where to where, where to find big time at. Um just look for the guy with the with the belts around around his shoulder and around his waist. That's that's where you can find Justin. <laughs> but uh listen. And hopefully by the time we're back in the studio, both of you guys can come through with the belts. Absolutely. Sure. Listen, absolutely. Two champs will come through. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna need y'all to keep holding it down for Brooklyn. Yep, absolutely. We got you. All right, guys. Y'all too. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, good luck uh, this weekend. I mean, if you want to do a first round knockout, you know, just for me, I appreciate that. Um, you know, for the folks at home, because I, I feel like you got to be in competition with Justin because he, you know what I'm saying? Like, since he knocked his fighters, his opponents out so fast, y'all kind of got to have a little competition thing. Uh, but, well, Justin's pro debut was one punch, so I mean, <laughs> you got you got one of those that, in. Right? You got the one headed quarter. <laughs> we gonna try to yeah, we gonna try to do that then. All right, man. We we gonna follow up with you after the after the fight. Maybe we can get a little 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 recap in um, after you get your your first your first W. Um, but again, um, for myself, Trip Young, Legend in Two Games, Justin Biggs and Aida Biggs, we will see you guys uh, back in the station. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Hold it down for Brooklyn. We up out of here. Peace. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Yo. Bye. Good talking to you guys. All right, guys. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Trip Young here. We are on the road. This is actually our first ever road edition of Real Fans Real talk. We came down to uh, the Washington D.C. area to, to 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 link up with my brother, my co-host, Legend in Two Games, so we can get one on location, man. Um, we we had a good we had a good weekend, but uh, it's time for the wrap up right now, and uh, we got to get ready to get back to New York. But we could not leave without putting a little show together for you guys from D.C. Legend in Two Games, Eric Sanchez. What's going on, bro? What's really good. What's really good, man. Yo, you know. And- we got such in a habit of saying virtual episode, virtual edition. <laughs> this this is one of the first times we've been able to record yes. together in quite some time, man. So I'm, I'm just happy to see you. I'm happy you guys made the trip. <laughs> and we got a lot to get into, man. That's a fact, bro. Uh, man, it was a sad, sad day in the uh, sports world for me yesterday. Oh, man, Lamar said- Jackson went out with a concussion and the Ravens lost. Yeah, I'll say you. You say it as if somebody died. I mean, it's a sad day, though, man. Like it, it, it hurts, bro. It hurts. You know, I thought we had we had a chance. We kept. We was in there in the first half. A little disappointed in Justin Tucker. You know, he, he the last two weeks he's missed some big uh, field goals, which could have actually changed the direction of the game going into the into the second half. Uh, if the Ravens Ravens go into the second half with a nine three lead, that kind of changes how they play the game moving forward. Maybe Lamar Jackson doesn't get hurt. Uh, you know, I know it's just a concussion. He'll be back soon, but he won't be back till next season. So, you know, it kind of sucks. But what are you going to do? Yeah, it, it was a tough loss. Um, we talked about our predictions uh, last week, and I thought the game played out pretty much the way I expected it to. The Ravens' defense was dominant. The Ravens' defense matched up great across the board against the Bills' receivers. Bills couldn't run the ball. Um, I think, you know, the Bills only ended up with about 200 total yards in a game. Yeah. But – the miscues on offense by the Ravens really is what did the men. Two missed field goals, and then obviously the interception um, in the end zone that gets returned yeah. for a touchdown. That's the difference in the game. But if you're the Ravens, I mean, you, you got to be upset this morning because you got to feel like that went exactly the way we wanted it to go. We held their offense to 10 points. Yeah, That's what you wanted it to be. You wanted it to be a slow, slow down game where you control the clock and you're able to run the ball. They were doing those things. They just couldn't convert their opportunities. And I, and I got to say this, man, because I want this to be on the record, too. If the Bills somehow win next week and go to the Super Bowl, we got to look back at this run and be like, this might have been one of, and I hate to use this term, but one of the luckiest runs. The Ravens had five drives yesterday that went inside the 30-yard line of the Bills. Yeah. But only got three points somehow. Last week, 
the Colts never turned the ball over, punted two times the whole game, had 470 yards of offense, and somehow lost. So if you're Buffalo, you're <laughs> squeaking by yeah. in ways that no other team has ever squeaked by. Yeah, you know, and uh, man, it just it just it just sucks. Uh, the way everything ended for Baltimore, I'm hoping that this will be the lead into them finally dealing with the wide receiver situation. Because when you get put in these type of scenarios where you have to pass the football, so we saw the opposite. Buffalo got in a situation where they didn't have to force pass all the time, whereas Baltimore they had to do it because now you know you're playing from behind. And Mark Andrews, as good as he is. Hollywood Brown is, is an up and comer. I think he he he'll get better. You know, continue to get better um, the more reps he gets on the field, and if he can actually stay healthy. But they need a legitimate number one wide receiver, and the perfect example for that is the difference in Josh Allen and the in the Buffalo Bills from last season to this year. They got Stephon Diggs, who's a true number one wide receiver, and they're going to the AFC Championship game this year. Um, if you look at even just the, just the smaller things, look at Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley had record year had a record year this year because he had a true number one wide receiver in Stephon Diggs on the on the other side of the football, taking a lot of that pressure off of him. So he can pretty much, you know, he's one of the better route runners in the league. So somebody like that can can really feast if you have a true number one that you know you have to double team and you still can't stop this kid. You know what I mean? Half the time, even when you double team them. So again, I hope the the Ravens address the wide receiver issues going into next season. Um, one more game note that we saw: NFC division game between uh, the Green Bay Packers. Uh, I think most likely going to be the MVP this season, Aaron Rodgers, and uh, a banged up uh, Rams team. Aaron Donald, uh, you know, and Jalen Ramsey, they tried as hard as they could, right. but I think that that the the, the one two three punch of Jones. Uh, you know, Devonta Adams and Aaron Rodgers was just a little bit too much for them. We kind of both, you know, felt like it was going into the game. We, we both picked the Packers to uh, to win this one. Um, I love what I saw from Aaron Rodgers, and I think and I, the, I, the reason I love it so much is because I, I feel like it's a slap back in the face to the Green Bay Packers organization for drafting a quarterback in the first round when you when you were a game away from going to the Super Bowl last year, and now you're right back in the same situation, a game away from getting to the Super Bowl this year, and you did not help Aaron Rodgers. He he pretty much did it. Him and his and his guys, Devonta Adams, uh, Lazar came back. You know he was a little bit banged up during the season. You know, had a little couple of blips early in this game, but he, he came back and scored a big touchdown to really seal the deal uh, for the Green Bay Packers. But, you know, if I'm Aaron Rodgers, I'm just like, yeah, kiss my ass. I told you so. Yeah, it, it's amazing that, like you said, they're back in the same position they were in last year. This time they'll be hosting the, the NFC Championship game as opposed to having to go on the road. But they obviously have gotten no contribution from their first-round pick because it was a quarterback. Yeah. So just imagine how explosive this offense could have been had they drafted one of those receivers – you know, in, in the first round, like a Justin Jefferson, right? Yep. Or Michael Pittman Jr., you know, one of those type of guys. So they're they're clicking right now in all cylinders. They've been my pick to go to the Super Bowl for a few weeks now. I think they will get it done. And, and yesterday was a prime example, and you heard Devontae Adams say it after the game. You know, the Rams were the number one scoring defense in all of football. Yeah. The Rams were only giving up 19 points a game. Yep. The Packers had that in the first half. Yeah. So like, you, knew, you knew it was going to be a long right, night. <laughs> right. You knew it was going to be a long night. They dropped 32. They could have dropped 40 because uh, Lazard actually dropped a touchdown pass yes. earlier in the game. Yep. That would have went for a big game. And then Rodgers came back to him later for the touchdown that sealed the game up. I, th I think they're just clicking right now. And Devontae Adams is a nightmare for anybody. You know, you saw Jalen Ramsey yelling at guys on the sideline yesterday because they had no way to stop him. Yeah. He, anytime he wanted to get open, he got open. And if he wasn't getting open, Aaron Jones was picking you apart. Yep. Or Rodgers was finding another receiver running wide open down the field. Again, that is a very good Rams defense who has pretty much locked down every team they've played this year. The games they lost yeah. wasn't because of their defense. It was because of their offense. But yesterday, their defense had no answers. Uh, we knew Jared Goff was going to struggle in this game, again, with the bad thumb. Mm -hmm. He did. I'm interested to see who the Packers get next week because, like I said, to me, they are clicking, and I think they have a legitimate shot to win this whole thing. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, he, he he's having one of those uh, the, the the LeBron season from last year where it was the get back season, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, it, they're looking really well. Um, to not have have made any real improvements on the offensive end, end of the football, those guys are clicking right now. Devonta Adams, you know, he's making his case for best wide receiver in football right now. 
And Aaron Rodgers, shoot, he's putting up a case right now that, listen, I'm still here. I'm an MVP, you know, my damn stuff. I'm, I'm all pro, you know, as well. And if I can get back to the Super Bowl and win this Super Bowl, y'all going to have to put a lot more respect on my name. And I think, you know, that's what he's looking towards doing. It, the games will go through uh, Lambeau Field, so they do have home uh, home field advantage going into the uh, the NFC Championship game, whether it be the, uh, the, the, the Bucks or the Saints, they will have to go to – to Lambeau Field, um, which I think, I mean, for Tom Brady's school, he's used to playing, you know, in that in that type of, of, of weather. Drew's been in the Dome a little while, but, uh, you know, but the Saints are still clicking on all cylinders right now as far as with their offensive weapons. Everyone's healthy. Everyone's back. Michael Thomas is back. He looked amazing last week. Kamara's looking amazing. Um, but we, we, we got to get into that game to this uh, Buck Saints. Um, with that being said, both offenses actually have been clicking – the past couple of weeks, we said from the beginning of the season that uh, that that it was going to take some time for Tampa to really start getting things together because we didn't have the same training camps, we didn't have the preseason uh, the way we usually do. And sure enough, by around week eight, week nine, they really started clicking. That offense started clicking. Um, I, I, I liken Antonio Brown to a uh, James White. For Tom Brady, I think he's that type of receiver for him. That's what he's kind of turned into. And then you got the two big play guys, Mike Evans and Godwin. And shoot, the 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 way uh this kid is playing for net. Um, you know he's he's out here balling. You know the past couple of weeks as well. He's actually been able to stay healthy. He's getting into the rhythm of the offense. Um, who are you taking in this game? Um, it's as they say in football, it's tough to beat a team three times because the Saints. Did take care of the Bucks the first two times. Mm-hmm. But I still like the Saints in this game. I, I felt all along that the Saints were the better team Yes, uh, as a collective. And, and you're right. It took Tampa a little while to gel. They are gelling now. On paper, they have the better weapons. On paper, they look like the better team. But I'm going to go with the Saints because I think the chemistry is already there. I think they have the better head coach. I, I think Sean Payton is going to come up with a game plan to slow down this Tampa um, offense. And, and not him specifically. Obviously, the defensive coordinator. But I think they already have an idea of how they want to do that. They really shut down Tampa in that second game they played this year. And so unless Tampa is going to have a a stronger commitment to the running game, I think the Saints are going to beat them again. Bruce Arians is very stubborn in his play calling. He wants to air it out. He wants Tom Brady throwing the ball 30-plus times. And that could work against a lot of teams. But the Saints have a secondary that's good enough to slow that down. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what will happen. Tampa will have their moments. Uh, I don't think they're going to shut them out. I don't think they're going to blow them out. I think it's going to be a good game. Again, this is the third time these teams are playing each other. But I think ultimately the secondary to Saints is going to be the factor. The fact that they can get the pass rush without having a blitz, whether it's Davenport, uh, Hendrickson, or um, Cam Jordan, they can get to the quarterback and create havoc. I think they will. And I think Kamara has a big day against the the linebackers of the, of the Tampa Bay Bucks because they struggle in coverage. And I, I think the Bucks at least get to the uh, the NFC Championship game. I'm picking them to to win this one in a close one because um, I, I I do feel like this game is a toss up game. I think either one of those teams is equipped to come out with the victory. But I'm just gonna give Brady and that Brady magic uh, the edge in this one. He's got a point to prove. He's already um, outdone uh, Belichick as far as. His team has gotten to the playoffs, but I think he wants to put a little bit more of a of a space in between the two of those guys to in in the age old argument of who is uh, more important, who is the the bigger part of that mm-hmm. Brady Belichick goat goat conversation. So I'm I'm, I'm taking the Bucks in this one, but again, uh, you know the Saints are very capable. Uh, they, Michael Thomas is back, Kamara is back, Drew Brees is back. Actually, I think this this is actually going to come down to to Drew Brees. And, uh, and and what Drew Brees is able to do, you know, are we going to get the because you know we've had the, the blunders the last couple of seasons with the with, with the Saints where they've had they've been in situ- put themselves in situations where the game has been determined by some kind of a crazy uh, call towards the end of the game. So is he going to do enough early so that we don't even have that type of a situation when they play the Buccaneers? I don't know as of yet, but again, we got the two grandfathers going at it. Either way, is going to be an amazing game, and I am here for it. Uh, I, I want to say this before we mm-hmm. switch subjects, too, because that's a great point you made about the endings of the Saints' seasons the last three years. They've yeah. had some crazy <laughs> endings. Now, three straight years, they've had some crazy endings. Two of those happened in the Superdome, where they're going to be playing today. No matter what happens, <laughs> no matter what happens today, this is the Saints' last home game, because even if they win, they yes. would have to go to Green Bay. So could it happen for the third year in the Superdome? 
to Jeez. end. We saw the, the the no pass interference call against the Rams that ultimately led the Rams to go to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then last year against the Vikings with with the crazy comeback and ending to Kyle Rudolph where it looked like offensive pass interference, but it wasn't. Exactly. And and they blew a lead that in that game as well. So you're right. Maybe if, if this game is tight, <laughs> if this game is as tight as I think it's going to be, there's a possibility where you start to it starts to creep back in your mind. Like, mm-hmm. remember what happened last time we were here. Let's let's make sure we finish it off this time. So that's a great point. Exactly. And then uh, and on the AFC side, uh, Super Bowl champions, Kansas City uh, Chiefs, they are still alive and well. Uh, looking forward to playing at home. They have the the Browns, who ended off the season as one of the hottest teams in football. Uh, you know, went out did what they were supposed to do last week, knocking the the, the Steelers. We don't even talk about the Steelers no more, what they did to the Steelers. But now they're going up against probably the biggest offensive juggernaut uh, in football with the, the level of eliteness at so many different positions on that offensive side of the football. I don't think that the Browns have enough to to beat Patrick Mahomes. I don't even think this thing is going to be close. I, th- I, th- I think the, the – this is where the Browns go back to being the little brother, uh, bottom of the basement team, and um, and and I'm taking the Chiefs in this one. Yeah, I'm taking the Chiefs. I mean, I don't I don't view it as like them being a little brother. I mean, we, this is just a, a different level of, of contender. Yes, that's the way I look at it. You know, the Browns are a good team. They're on the rise. They they finally figured out their quarterback position after 20 plus years. You know, Baker <laughs> Baker showing them that he, yes. he can be the franchise quarterback. They've got a great running back duo. They've got some pieces on defense as well, but they're just not the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. And that's that's the biggest difference. I, I'm, I'm willing to make this guarantee, and I'm pretty safe. I'm, I'm, I feel pretty safe in saying that this is going. This ain't going to be a 28 nothing end of the first quarter score. No, 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 not we, at all. We're not going to see that this week. I might stop watching football if we see that. Yeah, go it, it ain't going to be 28 nothing Cleveland at the end of the first. We know even, that. even even though Mahomes has come back from those type of yes, yes, deficits before, but I just don't think in this situation that we're going to be seeing that. I think this thing is going to be all about Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, right. Hilaire. Uh, well, is, is Hilaire playing today? I know he's been injured. Yeah, no, he's, he should be. He should be. Okay. He should be back for the game. And then Le'Veon Bell. I mean, listen, he's got something to prove still too. You know yeah. what I mean? But I think they have they have a deep enough team, and they have one of the best coaches in football, um, in, in Andy Reid. And um, I think their defense is a little better than they get credit for too. It's yes. not. A, it's not a world class defense. Not a top ten defense. But because they play with such big leads all the time, you're going to give up some pass yards. You know, teams are trying yes. to play catch-up. They're going to throw the ball. You're going to give up a lot of yardage. That's that's the name of the game. But Plus they're good garbage enough, time. Right, but they're good enough to get pressure on the quarterback with Chris Jones and, and, and um, Frank Clark. They're good enough to make plays in the secondary. So I think I think they're going to show today that they're a better defense than what some people uh, realize. Chiefs are going to win. Yeah, I think the Browns will make it entertaining for the first half because, as we talked about before, sometimes the Chiefs get off to slow starts. It happened last year in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if they get off to a slow start and maybe the Browns are able to go up 7 nothing or maybe 10-7 early in the game. Yeah. But then once that offense gets clicking, there is just nobody in that secondary that's going to be able to run with Tyreek Hill or cover Travis Kelsey. Oh, by the way, Nicole Harden is running wide open down the sideline. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sammy Watkins is open now. You know what I'm saying? It's, yes. it's just going to be a bunch of guys running around and open. So, And they've been much. here before. Absolutely. The last three years, they've been in the same uh, situation. The, the only playoff loss on Mahomes' resume is an overtime loss to the Patriots in the yes. FC Championship game. Tom Brady ain't on the field. Bill Belichick ain't coaching against them. So there's no way I could see them losing this game. Exactly. And and before before we do transition out of the NFL – we, you know, we got to give our props to uh, Eric B. Enemy and the amazing job that he's done. Um, and the reason I bring him up is because I'm getting a little bit nervous now because I'm seeing all of these coaching hires in the NFL. I see Urban Myers down in Jacksonville. Uh, the Falcons have, have brought somebody in. The Jets have, are doing interviews right now. And well, the Jets got their coach. Yeah, they got, they yeah. got Robert Salah oh. from, from the 49ers defensive coordinator. Okay, so now the job pool is <laughs> shrinking up right now. And I'm, you know, I. I, I've been saying I'm going to be real upset if Airbnb Enemy is not a head coach in this football uh, league next season, unless he chooses not to be. He deserves the job, a job, I should say. Uh, we've seen other head, uh, offensive coordinators get head coaching positions who didn't have the track record that he has as yes. an offensive coordinator. He's on his way to possibly a second Super Bowl run. 
But you're right. The interview part of it becomes tough. And that's why I didn't understand why some of these teams are rushing to hire a guy. Yeah. Because they still, and, and not just Eric Bieniemy, there are a lot of good assistants that are still out there, you know, waiting for opportunities. Leslie Frazier, who's the defensive coordinator for the Bills, a former head coach as well, he's probably going, he's probably going to move up on a lot of people's uh, list in yeah. terms of interest in wanting to hire him as a head coach. So <coughs> I think Eric Bieniemy deserves a shot. Right now, I think the best job might be that Chargers job. Yes. As we talked about because of Justin Herbert, we, we've mentioned it before. Um, but ultimately, just let the man get an interview, man. Bring him into the building and, and see what he's about and give him the opportunity to show you that he can do the job. And this might be something that the NFL needs to change uh, moving forward because of situations like these, just to open up the interview process. I mean, obviously, it's just your choice whether you want to take it because you do have a lot of things going on. Um, as far as if your team is still playing, but I think they're at a level where it wouldn't even matter if he, you know, did a, a Zoom interview or some just anything, just to like you know put have him in the, in the mix of what's going on with all of these coaching hires. But again, we'll keep you guys posted on that. Uh, before we get out of football, though, um, I had something shipped down here to, to Washington D.C. We had the Real Fans Real Talk Fantasy Football League, uh, you know, just ended. You know, I took that one home this year, my first ever fantasy football championship. And um, and so they sent something down here to, to, to D.C. They knew he was coming down. So they <laughs> sent this thing right here down, and uh, they wanted me to, to make sure I had this on the air. It made its so appearance. It did. It made it its made appearance, appearance right, here. right here. So they sent this thing down. Let me see if you can get that on, on, on that camera right there. This is the championship trophy. I had to hold this thing up. Fantasy football champion, Trip Young. Trip Young Ballers. Real Fans, Real Talk 2021. Uh, it's my first trophy, man, and I'm happy. <laughs> uh, you know, I want to thank thank God and my and my mama and uh, everybody else that played in the league, man. I'm gonna just sit this here for the rest of the show. Y'all can watch that for us when we get back to the studio. I'm gonna bring that out to the set for you guys to check out uh, live. You gotta the make studio. sure now. You gotta make sure that goes on your resume because you know. Oh, that's a, a fact. You're an award winning director, and now. Exactly. This might be my biggest award, though. This, this is the biggest award. Be, this, yeah. this goes up there above everything else. I, I completely understand, man. Above my, my B-plus on my chemistry test in high school. Right. <laughs> move, move, move over fifth grade test that on the refrigerator. Exactly. The fantasy football trophy. It's, it's coming home. <laughs> we got one coming home, man. So, uh, But, yeah, man, uh, definitely a good year. Thank you to everybody that signed up for fantasy football. We're going to be right back to it next season. Uh, jumping over to NBA, though, James Harden made his debut. Uh, with the Brooklyn Nets, first ever thirty point triple double in a debut uh, mm -hmm. with the team. Durant also helped out because he put up forty two points. Kyrie Irving is still uh, out of action though, um, but it, I mean, if this is any you know indication of what we're gonna get from the Nets on the court with these two guys playing at that level and the team looking the way it looks, they're gonna be hard to stop if they stay healthy. They're gonna be tough. Um, I I think. Kyrie being there changes the dynamic of that team. Yes. But wild card. Yeah. But I, I do think that if they can figure it out, yes, they can be dangerous because Harden showed the full package yesterday. Granted, it's against Orlando Magic, so I don't want to put too much emphasis yes. on what he did in that game. However, he showed you the ability to run the offense, run point, let KD play off the ball, and assist on a bunch of different things going on, and really open up the floor because – Harden could do anything he wants with the ball in his hands. And then when you put the shooters out there, like Joe Harris, now they become very tough to stop. And that's why, like I said, if Kyrie's on board yes. and they can make this work, they could be a very good team. But if Kyrie's not on board, I, I've, I've been open in my, in my belief that I, you trade Kyrie and you make it work with Harden and KD and the role players because I think Harden and KD are good enough to get you to the championship. Kyrie is that box of chocolates from Forrest Gump. You never, never know, know what you're going to get. Gonna get. Um, you know, or you don't know where he's at either. Yeah, always. <laughs> always, <laughs> yeah. Or, or where he's at. I really hope that he, he gets his act together because he's actually in a great position because if these guys can actually stay healthy, you got three superstars on the same team, they could go on a championship run if everyone gets their, their mind and, and, and just focus on, all right, we got a task at hand. We're good enough. We're better than the majority of the teams in the, in the league right now. But if we can all be on the same page and continue to build up a chemistry, this is a team that could three p. You know what I'm saying? Potentially, I'm not. I know that's obviously that's a that's saying a lot because it's hard to three p. But if we're just talking about the the caliber of players, you have three superstars, two of which are MVPs, uh, two of which are NBA champions, and none of these guys are afraid of the moment. 
that's the, the potential that's there with the, the Brooklyn Nets right now. But everyone has to be on the same page and willing to make the necessary sacrifices in order for this thing to work. The East is very competitive this year with Philly, with Milwaukee, with Boston. Um, they've got the best talent on paper. Now they just got to translate it to the court. Another part of that, that situation, though, uh, there was a trade that went down <laughs> that sent Harden in there. But the, it also sent Karis LeVert out of Brooklyn who Karis LeVert is is going to be out for the remainder of the season. Um, I'm a little confused on what's going to happen behind this because I I don't know if this is going to to have any type of effect on the trade um, of Harden going to Brooklyn because if he's medically not able to play, um, the only thing though that I that I you know thought about though first was that LeVert. They said that that the Indiana Pacers knew that this was going down, but I don't know if if did they know at what point did they find out that this was going to happen? Was it before Lavert was traded to Indiana? Because Lavert was traded to Houston first and then traded to to Indiana uh, for for Victor Oladipo. So I'm not sure how this thing, what kind of effect this thing is going to have on that whole uh, four team type of trade scenario but it is interesting um and, and we'll give you guys more news about it as it comes in because this is literally yesterday yeah and stuff is happening late night yesterday so we're still collecting information on it i mean first and foremost you know i, I thought and prayers go out to them yes because it's a mass that they discovered um so obviously it's early stages they don't know what's going to happen but he is going to be out for the rest of the year i don't know how this really how this could be corrected I mean, unless they already knew, like you said, unless they knew ahead of time and were still willing to take them on. Yeah. But I, there's no way to really correct the trade at this point because it's not like the Nets have picks that they can send you, you know, for, for this situation. Then you also got to wonder, like, what was already disclosed in the medical information? Because yeah. even before he gets the physical, you had to get the medicals from the Nets to show you that he was in good yeah, health they when they traded him. Yeah. So that's the part that I think I'm most confused on because it's like, all right, so who, who dropped the ball here? Who didn't disclose this? And, and then, ultimately, how is the league going to rectify this? Because if I'm the Pacers, I was hoping that Levert could be part of my team this year that's going to be going to the playoffs. Yes. Right? Because they traded away Victor Oladipo, who was a part of their team and was the starting two guard. Yeah. So, I, I, tr I lose a piece. I don't get the other guy I'm supposed to get in the trade. And then mm. I, I can't be compensated any other way because Nets ain't going to send me no picks for him. And uh, exactly. That's it. It's, it's over yeah, that it's done. So, I, I just want to see how the league handles it from that standpoint. And... um. It'll be interesting to see how they how they handle these type of situations moving forward. Because in the past, you would make guys go back to the team they were at if, if you didn't pass the, the physical. Yeah. But Harden played last night, so I don't think he's going back. That's what I'm saying. Like, at this point, we kind of got to wait and see. Uh, but, again, yeah, we, we definitely wish uh, Karis LeVert a speedy recovery. That's one of my guys from Brooklyn. I like Karis LeVert a lot. I like his game. And, you know, I think moving forward, as long as everything is cleared medically with his health, I think he'll be able to come back and be, you know, and continue to improve on his game. But it's just a kind of a sticky situation. And I've never seen anything like this, uh, you know what I'm saying, go down. And then, but everything is kind of already in place. Mm -hmm. Every All the moving parts are kind of yeah. in place except for that one. Um, so we're going to have to wait and see. But we, we definitely wish uh, Lever a, a speedy recovery. Uh, finally, we're going to get up out of here. Just a quick baseball note. The Yankees brought in uh, Corey Cooper for, uh, on a one-year $11 million deal to help out with the pitching. I like it. Um, you know, he's he, he's one of those top guys. I know last year he was dealing with injuries. But, uh, listen, you come back, give us a good year. Yankees are good enough to, to win it all. They have been for the past couple of years. Uh, low risk, high reward. You know, one year, $11 million, no biggie to them. But they're, they're trying to position themselves. And it's been a good week. They, they bring him in. They re-sign DJ LeMahieu. So they're angling to try to um, obviously get to the World Series. And I think it's, it's both solid moves. That's a fact. Um, really quick before we get out of here, let me just shout out the sponsors. Uh, Petro Home Services, Kmart, the Rosado Firm, and as always, Soundview Liquors. We appreciate you guys for keeping the bar stocked for us. Make sure you guys are tuning in uh, every Thursday night, uh, Verizon 43, 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. in New York City. If you are not in the New York City area, do not worry. You can still watch live every week on the website, realfansrealtalk.com. I mean, you want to give us a final thought? Uh, man, uh, we appreciate the support. You guys keep tuning in. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, obviously. Subscribe to the podcast. And uh, enjoy the games today, man. 
That's a fact, man. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Y'all be blessed out there. Everybody stay safe. For myself, Trip Young, and my co-host, my brother, legend in two games, Eric Sanchez, we up out of here, man. Peace. What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com.